You're welcome back to the final lap of our journey this morning and we're talking about a trend which could be worrisome to a lot of people and that is how uh, to to safeguard your kids, as it were, from uh, getting unwholesome content from the internet. The internet has come to stay. We cannot say it is no longer going to be a thing because it's come. Technology has brought it to us. But how do we do uh, the needful such that they don't get to go to that point where they get unwholesome content from the internet and just go through them? Like they say, uh, you are what you see, you are what you think, you are what you say, and so many other things. We are going to talk with uh, somebody who will help us um, give some pointers. Uh, her name is Muta Ngozi Igweo King. He, she is a lawyer. Uh, we are glad to have you this morning. Good morning and welcome to the show. Morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay. Uh, now, Apart from the fact that um, it's important to communicate with your children and then you buy them phones, uh, some people see it as um, something of class. My child is, is having a phone, an Android phone, as young as five, as young as seven, as young as ten. And now we're complaining about unwholesome content which you might not have a hold on. Yes. What are your comments? Yeah, thank you for having me. So, um, like you said, having a phone and a means of communication with the children is very important. I'm here working. I need to communicate with my kids at home. So, um, but the import apart from that, we find out that these days there are a lot of requests and homeworks and assignments and a lot of things that are sent to the children from their schools and various projects that they need to do online. So, usually you would expect or think that the parents will be available to assist but most times we all know the situation being a working parent and coming back home probably late at night and the children have to submit the next day and all of that so if those gadgets may be a necessary evil let me use that word so it's necessary um need to communicate the children need to know that you can reach them at any point in time but the the catch there is to be able to monitor what they have access to so you need to ch be sure that the children know what they're doing. There has to be some kind of communication. Just like I have girls, just like I sit down and talk to my children about body, knowing their body, how, what is appropriate and inappropriate, you also need to sit down and talk to the children like, this is appropriate online. This is how to manage your online presence. There's cyber security, you can teach them. There is a data theft. There are a whole lot of things that can go wrong. There could be online preys on the on the children, both male and female. It has nothing to do with girls now. So anybody online could just be there, predators looking for a child that is scrolling by, and they could steal their data. There's come something called data protection. So if you don't have, if children are not pro properly, properly carried along or thought how to protect their data online, there could be like an identity theft, data theft, and you find out that someone is using their identity to commit crime somewhere. So in as much as they're necessary, necessary to have the children um, online for whatever reason. This is a tech world. I mean, a lot of children do coding. A lot of children train online. We also use um, the technology and the internet to get the children to be busy aside their usual school work to learn, you know, um, side hustle, then put it like that. So as much as we're teaching them that, we should not leave them unmonitored online. So awareness is very important. Communication is key. They need to understand what they do. Yeah, but... Uh, most of this, the things that we complain about don't even come from the regular, regular usage of whatever we're, we're talking about, gadgets. It comes from the pairs. <laughs> so sometimes they don't even have the phones, but their pairs who have the phones will show them so sure. many things. And they too will be craving for that phone. And once they have it, they want to explore as well. They just want to be independently doing these things. Uh, you know, under the duvet, they, they're, they're, they're watching some things that they shouldn't watch and all that. So how do we control our children and control their pairs? So um, it is a uh, parenting is a vocation. So it's not something you just have to, you have children is one thing. Parenting your children is another thing. So you have to be a present parent. You have to be one step ahead of your kids. You have to know all of the things that happens like i think i've i came across somewhere there's like a list of 
codes that the peers used to communicate with themselves. Maybe if you open the door, mother in the room, something, something. I have seen all of that. At the point, I'm like, am I supposed to memorize all of this? And, no. and even if you memorize, I find out that they develop, they're always yeah. fast-tracked. So you as a mom or a parent, let me not say mom, a parent needs to also be on your toes, aside from putting them in the hands of God, of course, but you need to know what's going on. So the peers too, you have to know the people your children are friends with. So show me your friends and I'll know who you are. I need to know who my children relate with. Any name that comes constantly. So that is also being able to listen. Parents, a lot of time we're on our phone, the children are coming to say something. Even sometimes you might find out that that child may have tried to communicate something. There may be slight subtle changes in the children. You need to be observant. You need to check. You need to listen. Even if it means it's dropping on their conversations. And especially they are, if they have siblings. They are like the closest. So there must be that communication to tell them and let them know that you, they can't keep secrets. Aside from doing your own as a parent. You need to have that communication and understanding. You need to teach the children to know that this is wrong, this is right. Yeah, well, te Tech is here to stay. Yeah. Tech is here to stay. And... Uh, but then we need to, and in agreement with what you're saying, by the way, that parents need to be a step ahead of their children. But let's look at some of the practical ways that parents can actually do this okay. beyond what you just mentioned. Um, he said also, Nyangolin, when he was speaking, that some have made it a status thing where you have kids who are not old enough, because in my opinion, children who are not old enough should not be given phone. A child that's about. not up to 14, 15, 16 should not be given phone. They can easily be manipulated. Even those who are 14, 15, 16 can still be easily manipulated. Exactly. We had a case of yeah. a boy in the U.S. who was uh, manipulated. To, to commit suicide. suicide. Yeah. yeah. So, so what are some of these practical steps that parents can take? One of the steps I take, I sneak in. Yes. While, you know. Unexpectedly, I sneak in without knocking, without my, you know, no shoes, no shoes. I Just open, open the door. door I, yes. You know, I burn do my that. and grab the phone so that I can quickly. Because See you what know they're how doing. to delete quickly. Very quickly. They're fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So even at that, there's a rule in my house. You don't lock your door. There's no locked door. We have open door policy. I don't want to come and be knocking for you before I enter. Mm -hmm. I just open the door. And aside from that, I have, just like you said, you open. Even if the door is closed, I don't, I just open. Sometimes in the middle of the night, you just wake up. Uh, you just have to be, a, I don't know, how the energy will just come. You have to be on your toes. Aside from is, that, is that legal? It's <laughs> they are underaged. <laughs> they are underaged. They are child. They are underaged. I'm just asking because some people would say, uh, no matter how young, they still are entitled some, to some kind of privacy. So no. No. Not at this. No. No, 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 no. They are your responsibility. Mm. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get that Well, out. not all you boys, you are Nigerian. <laughs> yeah, we are Nigerian. So aside from that, you also have to, you can have a passworded, I mean, content. Okay, like my children, I think at a point, they had to create an email for them on all of that. And then um, the school, I had to route, I think Gmail has something like that, that before they download anything, yeah. they have to have your content. You need to approve it. Yeah. So it comes to me. So sometimes if I'm delaying, they might call me, mommy, there's something that I want to download it in your, can you? So I need to check it to see what you're downloading. Sometimes I go through, they are downloaded. Okay, you said you are doing homework. I need to be sure that this homework you are doing. So that is it. I, you have to just be checking and checking and communicating as much as you can. And you don't want them to be online or maybe with their peers, just like you said, and they have downloaded inappropriate content and then uh, under the bed they are doing that and... From there, they are sharing with people. And before you know it, somebody is trying to um, take, advantage. take advantage and maybe trying to, what's the call now, to get them, oh, if you don't do this, I'm going to share your pictures online and all bully that. Them bully and them. them. And then before you know it, they succumb to whatever pressure that comes. So there's so much pressure out there. We as parents, has, we just have to be on our toes and present and active and think ahead. And it's, it's a full-time job. Well, we were just talking the other time um, earlier about the fa the challenges that parents have. That sometimes your only your only salvation is that they are in school because you have to work <laughs> your fingers off before you can 
put food on the table because of the Nigerian situation. Uh, uh, because I know some other places, there are people who resign from their jobs. They want to be moms to their kids until they grow enough to take yeah, care of themselves. Right. But if you do that, here you starve to death. Yeah. Uh, juggling the challenge of, of having to make some money and then taking care of your kids could be very, Foot, yeah. very, very, Tasking. very difficult. Uh, what are some of the recommendations that you would say someone can do and balance the two? You are a working mom, like you work, Outside. but you still have kids and you take care. What is the magic that you do? We have like one minute. So there's no magic. Every Whatever works for A may not work for B. So it depends on you finding time and structuring around it. And of course, you have to make that a priority as a parent. Just like you said, some parents just, oh, school has resumed. They just push everything to the teachers and to the school. And even sometimes, you find out that even when a teacher observes and tries to communicate to the parent, the parents are defensive. They're like, no, my child can't do that. Your child is doing that. There's no this state I'm living in denial. It's the real. So myself, I tell, even though I'm not, I need to know what is going on. I speak to the teachers in school. I check my children's bag. I don't want to see what I didn't buy in your bag. This pencil, is it yours? Is not your How did you get it? How? Why did you ask or did you tell me you had run out if where we so you need to be you just have to be and then as much as you provide in quote, it's not by providing the best trendy handbags and school bags and shoes. Just know that you have to be present and do what works for you as a mom or as a father or as a parent and then listen to like sorry just to run down. I think there's a recent one where it was even another parent that told the mother that the daughter was doing some so and so thing on her phone with other children. Mm -hmm. Because they do things right under your nose and you may not even know. And the child is innocently, you think, oh, my child is the best. Listen to other views. Review it. Know your child. Even when you say, I know my child, she can't do that. Still have that thing. It doesn't it mean you don't trust. It takes a community. Mm -hmm. So you have to be open to, I mean, complaints or whatever comes out from out there from the teachers and as long as you're not being biased about it and they're not being mean listen they would know okay uh, well ladies and gentlemen it's just a pity this is where we have to draw the curtain uh, we've been talking with Muta Ngozi Igwe King, mm -hmm. a legal practitioner uh, it's been a pleasure having you in the thank house thank you for always. having me thank you pleasure uh, having you Muta. same here okay before we go we'll leave you with these words uh, from uh, uh, Henry David Thoreau and he says not until we are lost do we begin to understand ourselves so are you lost <laughs> that mainland bridge is not the answer <laughs> <laughs> not use that as a teachable learned. moment for yourself <laughs> yes. it's good to know that you've been there with us till this moment my name is Nyamgul Agaji I am Maureen Menonwe is going to have a splendid day and week <laughs>